Hello, this video is to show difference between a sealed crawl space and a unsealed or vented crawl space. So for this demonstration purpose, we are located uh, right now on the Gordon County campus of Georgia Northwestern Technical College, located in Northwest Georgia. We are looking at these two test houses that were built approximately four years ago. And the one on the left is a standard built house, uh, standard building codes, and uh, typically the way uh, construction in residential is uh, built. And the one on the right is built under Earthcraft standards and regulations through uh, South Face. And what we want to do is show you the difference between the two houses in both physical appearance as well as some data that we have collected and continue to collect through data loggers which record temperature and relative humidity in both environments of the crawl spaces. So what we'd like to do now is physically go into those crawl spaces. So we'll start on the left. Before we start, I do want to note the vents in the crawl space here. Whereas in this house here, you'll notice there's no venting at all. And we will show you that momentarily. But before we go in, I just wanted to show you the vents. And here we have a standard crawl space door, just a piece of plywood, a little bit of a lock here. You can see the standardness. <laughs> so now we're going to go inside. So now we are in the crawl space of the standard built house. You'll notice the vents are open. And you also notice things like cobwebs uh, everywhere. You'll notice insulation has started to droop down. You'll notice that the inside of the block is wet due to humidity, dampness, um, and all kinds of other conditions. It is currently about lunchtime on an August summer day in Northwest Georgia, which means humidity, which means heat and everything else. Now, so you'll see my data logger here. The top is the temperature, which is 79 degrees. Bottom number is relative humidity at 78.5. And um, this number is being recorded every four hours and uh, for 24 hours a day forever until we pull the data and that's what we're going to show you at the uh, in parts of this video is the data on these two houses so again uh, graciously donated by onset um, and their data loggers so check them out if you're looking to do some same type of experiment but we'll look around here too i, I showed you earlier the uh the cobwebs and um You'll notice there is some plastic, but mostly dirt on the ground. And just, uh, I mean, obviously you can't smell it through the video, but a um, lot of moisture, a lot of damp, musty. And uh, typically on a crawl space like this, you're going to have some mold starting to grow. Uh, currently on these joists, you can see some surface mold. Um, if we zoom in here, you can see that uh, critter nest being built up there, dirt daubers. Um, so a lot of insects can get in here, um, as well as obviously spiders and anything else. Now this is a fairly tight crawl space, um, where only insects can come in, but in other typical crawl spaces, like maybe at your own home, you may have squirrels or snakes or raccoons, whatever, trying to get in, cats. And when you have animals that get in, they can start tearing up insulation and ductwork. Uh, they can um, use the bathroom in the crawl space. Uh, they kind of take up and, and obviously create more odor that eventually goes up through your house because through the stack effect, uh, air typically rises from within the bottom parts of your home and goes up through the house. Uh, and so all this smell and, and moist and damp and just yucky musty smell eventually makes it up through into your house so if you've ever been into an old house 
and maybe the heating and air wasn't working that well or, or it's been off for a while or you just have window units, you can smell that musty smell and that is uh, the yucky crawl space. Okay, so uh, there's this one and now we're going to go next door to the Year's Craft House crawl space. Now in this one, this is the Earthcraft house, you'll notice the door is slightly different. This is an actually insulated door, and it is, well, you know, about a, maybe a little over an inch thick with insulation, uh, airtight seal, weatherproof seal. And so now we'll go inside here, get the light on, and so now we are in the sealed crawl space of the Earthcraft house. Um, and this uh, particular crawl space was actually uh, built or uh, sealed by AquaGuard uh, out of Atlanta. And so um, they have graciously donated uh, the material needed um, for this space, but it is a encapsulation. And as you can see, it's very clean um, compared to the one that we were just in with the uh, vented crawl space. Um, we have um, the plastic that you see on the ground is about a um, 20 mil at least uh, vapor barrier that is sealed up around each column or each pier um, that you see sealed with tape and then up on the top it is sealed with mastic um, and it goes up the walls and then we um, uh, my students actually came in and we installed a two inch foam insulation board you can kind of see the the thickness here and the reason we have the tape all the way around is so that i can do uh, a termite inspection to make sure we don't have any termites code says you need to be at least four inches from the bottom of the joist and you'll notice right here is the plastic cap part that is the top of the white vapor barrier encapsulation okay so that was my little design to put the tape there so I can do that inspection. Um, you'll also notice the foam that is in each cavity joint all the way around and the spray foam gives that extra insulation against the band of the floor joist. Um, we are in a zone where it requires, if you have a sealed crawl space, you are required to have an R10 on the walls and so this two inch foam board is in fact that it is our 10. Uh, you'll also notice that there is no insulation at all in the floor cavity and that is because it is, because it is not needed. Um, I'm going to show you the data logger on this house um, and we'll have to uh, turn on a, a light here for you to see it. Um, but the data logger here, um, if you look at the top we have about 76 degrees and the bottom shows 51.8 relative humidity. Okay, so that's quite a difference. I believe it just went up because I'm talking right next to it, so it's picking the vapor up uh, off my voice here, off my breath. So um, if we pan over here, you'll notice dehumidifiers. We had a large one that was originally installed, um, and it was almost pulling too much power and running too much. This is a very small space and so it was actually kind of oversized but it was donated by AquaGuard and since then we have uh, installed another dehumidifier that um, is sort of thermostat set and if I can look up here you can see uh, on the left showing my temperature in this space and on the right showing the relative humidity at 47 percent so once that 47 gets to it I think I set it at uh, maybe 40 or 45 I think um, once it gets there it will cut off now one other thing with this encapsulation is over here in the corner there is a sump pump that is recessed uh, into the ground when that fills up with water uh, it will pump out they have done a trench all the way around this space and um, the trench is a French drain with gravel around it and it is all around the inside perimeter of this room. So any groundwater that does happen to come into this 
crawl space under the plastic will collect in that French drain and drain to here and eventually be pumped out. We've also utilized that pump for the dehumidifier. Uh, so the dehumidifier actually drains into that pump as well. So it's kind of a, a both case scenario there with that. Um, but again, uh, sealed crawl space, there's my door. And you can see the difference in what a clean space this is. And so now we'll end up uh, looking at some data uh, to show you what we uh, what we've come up with to, to show some proof of that. Okay, so based off the data that we collected from the data loggers, in front of you you have a picture of the standard house. Now this is the house that's sort of built like everybody else's house. It has the vented crawl space, the nasty moldy crawl space. The data collected shows the uh, red line here that I've put on is um, showing 60% relative humidity. Okay, so what that means is anything typically north of 60% relative humidity, mold will start to grow. Okay, so the blue lines that you see, the data that was collected from, and if you look on the bottom left, it says 517, so that's May of 17, and here's July, here's September, here's November, all the way up till um, uh, July and into uh, August of this year of 2018. So you can see starting in May, you know, it's pretty high. We're up in the 70, 60 to 70 percent. There's quite a few that are peaking up in about 75 percent. Um, way up here, there's some that get up into the 80. But you can see the majority of the, the readings that were uh, taken are above 60 percent. And you'll notice down here where it's low humidity, that's in the, the January, February, March, and into April um, months where you know, maybe our humidity has not gotten um, as high as it normally is, okay? So, and then the black shows the temperature. So if we look on the left side, it gives us our temperature. So up here, 80 degrees is the highest number. So it'd be kind of coming across here. So there are quite a few uh, days here where it's uh, 80 degrees, but typically it looks like the majority is between 70 and 80 degrees. Obviously in the winter months, it dips down uh, cooler. Okay, so this just kind of gives you an idea of the standard crawl space. And so now I want to go to the Earthcraft crawl space, and this graph is going to be totally different. Now, before we begin, uh, you'll notice over here how it really dips down low. Uh, that's because we actually had a different dehumidifier at the time, and we had some issues with that, and so it was replaced. And the setting on my dehumidifier is actually um, a little bit uh, higher than what the other one was and then even since then like since I've reset the data loggers um, it is actually set for lower so it is, I set it for 45 where the new machine it was set at 55 and so what I want you to point out here though this is the earthcraft house this is a sealed crawl space here I've got 60 percent relative humidity and it's up here at the very top so as you can see clearly everything that was you know, collected here is below the 60%. So if I go back to that image, remember, here's the standard house and it goes through and the majority of it is above 60%. If I go to the Earthcraft, you'll see that all of it is below 60%. So the blue shows relative humidity, which is well below 60%, and I have no mold growing in that crawl space. And it is obvious by the smell when you walk into both of those crawl spaces, you can actually tell that. Okay, so here we're averaging, you know, probably around 50% relative humidity for the majority of the time. Um, like I said, the new setting, I've actually dropped it down to 45, and I'll be curious to see what that looks, looks like in a year. Um, and then over on the left, of course, is our temperature again. And even here, not much different from the other crawl space, which temperature is fine. Um, it's between 70 and 75, maybe, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, and that's the black readings. Obviously, again, in the winter months, it does dip down a little bit cooler. Um, but uh, you can see the, the, the temperature is, is unbelievable there. So what I want to do is I'll just put it all together and, and show you the both of them together. So the top is a standard. As you can see, most of it is above that 60%, which means mold is growing. And then the bottom one is the Earthcraft, which everything is below 60%. And I have no mold growing. Now... Earlier I mentioned the stack effect. When a stack effect takes place, 
air typically comes from the lower parts of the house up through the house and out through the top and different parts of the season create more or less of the stack effect but with that stack effect it's also bringing into your house that nasty moldy crawl space air that we can smell in our house and that's where um, most of it is from you know when you if you walk into an older house or one that maybe the air condition has been left off for a day or two or you know something like that you smell that musty smell that is your crawl space uh, my house used to be like that I used to you know we'd go on vacation for whatever a week or two and I would turn my air way up to like you know 80 degrees so it doesn't run as much when we would come back you could smell that musty smell now since I've sealed my crawl space we do the same thing when we come back home we don't smell that smell anymore because it's gone we don't have we don't have this upper condition here with the standard vented crawl space we have the lower one here where it's sealed okay so the vents are sealed everything is sealed in a vented crawl space typically you open those vents in the summertime and let you know it's supposed to be ventilating but it's letting in all that hot humid summer air and as soon as that hot humid air gets into the crawl space where it's a much cooler temperature it condensates out of the air and so that's why we have so much moisture in our crawl spaces that's what gets into our insulation and pulls the insulation down that's what gets uh, onto our wood and um, other uh, materials that grow mold and, and it starts growing surface mold at first and then it gradually gets worse um, that's what creates critters um, the little crickets that jump all over the place they love moisture so they're down there um, you know any other kind of insects and, and animals that like moisture and depending on you know how big of a hole you have getting into your crawl space will depend on how big of an animal gets down there too right um, and then of course our uh, heating and air lines if, if our heating and air machine or our equipment is in the crawl space then that's going to start condensating and rust will start forming and that machine will eventually rust out and so lots of benefits to it um, if you have any questions let me know but um, there's a lot of stuff online too but I just kind of wanted to physically show you some of the differences there between the two and especially with data that's been collected um, on that sealed crawl space and so once again thank you to AquaGuard for uh, sealing that crawl space for us and showing us how it's done correctly and then um, also thank you to our, uh, our data logger uh, people at Onset, they, uh, they did a great job by uh, uh, providing those data loggers with us as well. So, um, but if you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to let me know. Um, otherwise, um, you can check out more information online, but I hope that kind of cleared up sealed crawl spaces versus vented crawl spaces.